something that you shed your blood So I'm gonna live like my shame is gone Won't be shackled to the way I was I'm gonna live like my chains are gone Gone that will overcome I'm gonna shout like the battle's won Fall back devil cause your time is up I'm gonna live like the stone is gone good guys you guys got the you guys got that high you ladies singing that there's no way I could keep up with that good evening everyone welcome to church um, we have a rolling announcement board that I think Andy worked on so um, you guys can read through that stuff yourself that should be scrolling through um, are there any current announcements from the from the congregation, impromptu announcements. Okay, um, so let's jump right into praise reports tonight. Do we have any praise reports tonight? Charlie. Right on. Okay. Working, they pump down those beads and my brother and the Yeah, yeah. Right on. 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 Right on.
then it dried up. It was great. And then as soon as the Reverend appreciated it, the clouds opened up and the sun came down. <laughs> wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And so yeah. that yeah. is a praise of yeah. us. And he's giving prayers for me. Right. It's very, very good. Right. 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 Way it goes. And pray for a portal to open so I can enter in the UK. No. Oh, oh, you want to go to you want to go to London? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to pray for you, Matthew. Matthew was prayed that he would stop getting sick. Okay. Very good. Uh, prayer or uh, or uh, we're doing praise reports. Praise reports. This is the praise reports. Prayer requests. I know we uh, will be thinking of. The Couchmans, um, Mr. Couchman Sr., I'm sure you guys are aware, passed away this morning. So, um, be thinking of Jim, little Jim, a, a, a Jim's best friend, his dad's his best friend. I talked to him a little bit today. Um, he's he, he knows Mr. Couchman was a believer, and uh, we know we're going to see him soon. And Jim's, just pray for peace there. So, okay. Or uh, prayer Leanne's father is having knee surgery, and she's not feeling good herself. So we're going to think about. Destiny had surgery today. And so Okay. We're thinking about Destiny who's Brandon's helper who had surgery today, don't we? Um, we just two and a half weeks and we have Mega Week. So he's praying for Mega Week because I know I've got a whole slew of my niece's kids that are signing up and I'm super excited about it, but we have Mega Week and we have Mega Week and Yeah, yeah, God always moves on Mega Week, right around here. We're blessed with the Mega Week thing for sure, God. But we're 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 gonna, we're gonna take it for granted. We're praising God for His provision, and we're gonna keep praying for Mega Week, right on. Okay, yep. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to pray for cheap tickets to Nicaragua because the deadline to go is this Sunday, and we're trying to leave around like June 12. So uh, if you're interested in signing up for the trip to Nicaragua. Uh, let us know by this Sunday because that's when the deadline is. We're actually having a uh, dinner break still after church, second after second service at Leaf Awards. I didn't catch any of that. There will be a uh, lunch uh, at Leaf Awards after second service on Sunday. Yeah, this Sunday. Oh, okay. oh, is it about the Nicaragua? Yeah. Yeah. I used to think about my grandpa who he not hear, you know, catch about half of, you know, what like, people were saying. Surprise! I should have got my show. Okay. Praise and prayer requests. Um, I see God moving in uh, our family big time, but um, the devil is just not liking it. So it's like everything, you know, there's something goes good and then pow, you know, again. So yeah, just keep praying for them. Champs, rock it on. You got a great day, so you got a chance. Praise and champs. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray for you. We're gonna pray over you. Right on. Yeah, Jim. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Jeff had had, had three cat scans yesterday. My son. 
and he'll get he'll go back to the doctor in Mother Down College and they'll give him the results of what they, what they found. So just keep him in your prayers because it's just because <laughs> it's just uh, it's really rough right now. It's really rough for us all right now. Uh, Oh, your son had three cats. He had three yesterday. He could understand why they gave him and had three. I don't understand. We don't, and the nurses didn't know she that's what they ordered. And she's on college orders. So I'm going to have them. And uh, they'll be finding out the results tomorrow. So. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, so we're praying for the results. Right, and they'll be good. <laughs> they'll be great. Okay. Good. My wife. Pray for sunshine because she's on the road heading sunshine. to yep. Michigan. Yeah. Because her sister-in-law attempted suicide. They were allowed to say yeah. that. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Sun, 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 sunshine's sister-in-law uh, attempted a suicide, and so sunshine's and she's she's well, she's okay, right? Well, but, they're trying to get her stable. She was she hadn't woke up yet. They were oh. her heart's on her. Her heart's all messed up, so they, I don't know if she's stable yet. She hasn't texted me to tell me. She won't know more until she gets to Michigan. Right, okay. So heading up to Michigan. Gotcha. Okay. John? Yep. Um, <laughs> I just prayed before it reminded me when, when she, she said that. Um, remember the guy that two Christmases ago had attempted suicide with a gunshot to his head, and, and Akeem, and um, his mom told me the other day he's He's doing well. He went to ride a bike. He still loves Jesus with all his heart. And they're getting ready to start training him to uh, drive the car now. Um, he was 20, I think, when that happened. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah in the back here. Baby Eliana goes for her prosthetic eye. And uh, the chemo is shrinking the tumor in the other eye. So. Keep praying that that keeps continuing to shrink. Right on. Okay, so she, baby Eliana is getting the prosthetic eye and seems to be working. Good eye. So good. My, uh, just pray for my family. My grandpa had a heart attack a little over a month ago. And they put him in a skilled nursing home for rehab and he went downhill. He's also in there with my grandma who has Alzheimer's. So their a mom just had both her dad and her mom put in a nursing home and she's probably gonna lose grandpa and grandma. Mm-hmm. So it's not in her right mind right now. So just pray for the family. Right, gotcha. Okay. Matthew pray three for the same side. I've been more better and more happier since I got a phone and so far I've been doing good at not giving in to that bad personal temptation. Right on. Yeah. So that's good. Good level of temptation, Matthew. Yeah, good. Okay. Good. Okay, Mr. Circle. Pray for my for Cheryl and her sister who don't come back from Myrtle Beach. She's been down here since the night. And they were putting back on Saturday, but they're trying to sneak back in on Friday without me knowing about it. Well, I found out about it. <laughs> 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 I'm not actually surprised with my fingers on it. Anyway. There you go. Okay, we'll pray for them, Charles. Right on. Yeah. Okay, they're flying back. Oh. Neither one of them in on the airplane without guidance. <laughs> 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 Okay, very good. Oh, Cheryl. Um, Veronica just had a CAT scan, and they found some activity in some of her lymph nodes, and she's got to have further testing done. Veronica Scobia. Veronica Scobia. Just pray that it's not cancer, and that it's okay. just an infection or something going on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And yeah, is yeah. there a yeah. prayer request? Pray for my mom's issues and her negativity, mm-hmm. voice sickness, because she has trouble in that area. Pray for um, a wall of protection <coughs> around my very best friend and sister, um, because there's evil working, and we need that protection. It's especially strong this next Tuesday. And also for uh, God give me an answer of how to proceed with my back. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 
Very good. Okay, let's go to the Lord. Lord God. That was a lot. <laughs> but first, we give you glory and praise, Lord God. <laughs> All of us have the breath of life because of you. All of us have a have a home that you're preparing for us because of you. None of us deserve it. We don't deserve the next breath we take. We don't deserve the next step we're going to take, Lord God. But your grace has extended to us, and we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. Because of the way you provide and the way you've made a way for us, we glorify you. Lord God, there was many requests. Think about Jim. Give him peace, Lord God. We praise you that we know that he's home and uh, he's in paradise with you. But just give the family peace. Think about Leanne. Pray that she's well. Be with her mom. For Brandon. For Brandon's uh, helper. The surgery that she's went through. Pray for that little baby, Eliana. Let her keep that eye, Lord God. Let her keep that one eye. Pray that the chemo keeps working and shrinks that down and that the prosthetic goes good. Think about Billy's family. Cover them, Lord God. Give them peace. Give her wisdom and words to speak. We think about the Champ family. Cover them. Give Mrs. Champ words. Give her wisdom. Lead her. Let her speak. Pray for Mrs. Cannon, Lord God. Heal her. Let her know what to do. What's her next step with her back, Lord God? Give her peace with her friend. We praise you for Matthew. We praise you that he's getting victory over the things that he struggles with. Give us all words of counsel for Matthew. Pray that you can keep him from, from uh, getting sick, Lord God. Just, just make Let him be healthy, Lord God. We just offer up all these requests to you. And think about my brother back here, Jim. Lord God, we just we commit him to you. We, we pray for his healing, Lord God. We pray for everything that he's getting ready to go through right now, Lord God. We pray that doctors and medical staff just let their hands be ordained by you, Lord God. We just want to cover our brother Jim with prayer. Be with Jenny, Lord God. Give him both peace and both strength. Jim's... <laughs> Jim sits there just cool as a cucumber because he knows, he knows you've got him. He knows where life is, Lord God. We praise you for the strength. I can already see it in him. He says it to me. I feel like I'm getting punched in the stomach, and he's sitting there cool as a cucumber. He knows. He knows you. We praise you for his faith, Lord God. Heal his body and keep him with us here. Keep him with us here till you come back. Give him that Give him that strength and everything physically that he's going to need. Keep his strength and him and Jenny's faith as they walk through things. And we just cover him. And we just pray for the supernatural healing, Lord God. Just do it. Just do it, Lord God. I've seen you do it. I know you do it. I praise you, Lord Jesus. We're going to pray over this brother, Lord God. Lift him up to you. Right now we're going to give you our praise and worship. In your name, amen. You know, I often wondered as a kid, my grandmother always prayed for us. And I always wondered like a kid, you know, when you're little and your grandmother's constantly praying, you're thinking, who are you talking to? <laughs> you know, you kind of wonder what they're doing. But you know what? When you stop and think about it, praying for your fellow man, praying for your brother and sister, that shows love. That's God's love in action is to pray for them. And you know what? God says pray. Pray every night, pray every day, pray without ceasing, you know? It doesn't have to be anything particular because all of it shows your love for your fellow man, which is what he tells us to do, but it also shows our love and trust in him, you know? Because he is great, but you know what? He's greater than what we think. So ask him, ask him and, and believe and he'll give it to you. But he's not going to give it to you unless it's in your best interest or in their best interest. That's where the faith and love comes in. Prayer says a lot of things. It opens the hearts 
of you and it opens the hearts of other people so that you can show just how great God can be. You make me at my lowest moment. You saw me at my very worst. When I expected disappointment, love Oh 
first time I heard it was we walked out of the doctor's office after having that awful report. I was in shock. We got in the truck, and Jim turned on the key. The radio was on, and this song was playing. It's called Gonna Be All Right. And God just spoke to me. He said, it's going to be all right. And then it got to the bridge in the song. It says, I believe you're working all things for my good. That has always been my scripture, Romans 8, 28. So I believe it. storms God gives us a peace you know and that's all we want him to do is just to pour his spirit out and give us that peace good times 
bad times. You know, I've heard somebody say the other day that the only time they ever cried out to God was when things were going bad. And I thought, how much are you missing? Because God seems so much greater in the good times than he does in the bad times. So we should always ask for God to pour his spirit out, good times and bad.
just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. I'm not here for bless.
expect anything from you, God, but we just sit here, Lord, because that's where we want to be. God, we have heavy hearts tonight. We have a lot on our minds tonight, Lord. We have a lot going on in our lives and on our family's lives and our friends' lives, Lord, and, and we heard everyone's concern and love, Lord, that they have for one another, and Lord, we just bring it, and it sits here at the feet with us, and we just thank you and praise you, Lord. That even though we don't deserve it, you give us what we need anyway. And we just pray for that again, Lord. We pray that whatever we did wrong today or yesterday or the day before, Lord, that you please forgive us. Lord, we try, but sometimes we just don't get it right. So, Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to help us. Continue to guide us and direct us, Lord. Lord, in our life, Lord, in the lives of our family and our friends and our loved ones, and Lord, we pray a special blessing, Lord, that be placed on those in our congregation, Lord, that are, the path in front of them doesn't look real bright, Lord, but we know, Lord, that you are the light, and that, Lord, as long as we keep you in the center and where you're supposed to be, every day is going to be a sunny day within us. So we pray, God, we pray for that light. Give us the word, Lord. Fuel it. Keep it strong. And help us to be strong for each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nothing else will do. Thanks, John. Thanks, Jenny. Love you playing. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Hey, thanks for coming to church tonight. A lot of stuff competing with church. End of the school year, ball games. You know, the... Um, sunshine running up to Michigan for... Beth Ann's taking her up to Michigan. They're on the road. Could you just imagine going on a road trip with Beth Ann? Could you just imagine that? You've done it? Anyhow, she was, she, uh, yeah, she uh, needed to get to Michigan and sometimes doesn't drive. And, and Beth, Beth Ann said, I'll take you. So they were going to go tomorrow, but it's like a four hour drive up there and a four hour drive. So Beth, Beth Ann just said, let's go tonight and we'll rest and come back she'll come back tomorrow but anyhow thanks for being here is uh uh norma this all looks great up here i know you you're hard in it okay you're going to go away on us aren't you norma are you leaving yeah yeah but i appreciate you putting this stuff up here it looks nice looks good okay and uh what's that yeah didn't my wife do good Sunday? That's the best she ever done, wasn't it? Every year. Every year she's learning, growing, learning. She's trying to, trying to teach her. She's getting better. Okay. Just pick on her. Uh, hmm. Uh, there's so many things I can just share with you, but we're glad to be here tonight. I hope you're glad to be here tonight. Crowd's down a little bit, but man, I'm just going to preach my heart out. Is that okay? I feel like uh, Sunday was Mother's Day. We shot down to the hospital after church to see Jim Sr. Um, 
just had a he he wasn't really responded to anything Sunday they said and and I came in the room and said now Jim you wake up and I saw him go his eyes were matted so together he he couldn't get he finally got him and I said Jim only thing I can tell you is there's some amazing days amazing days are ahead for you brother amazing things are ahead and his eyes that were matted together just filled with puddles of tears and he passed away this morning so uh, there'll be a church right here right here at the church there'll be a funeral here looks like maybe Monday or Tuesday now we don't know anything on that they'll meet with a funeral home in the morning um, so we'll tell you more details over the weekend right but uh, they're going to have the funeral here at the church, which is wonderful. Anybody, hey, that faithfully comes to our church, that wants to have a funeral here at our church, we want that, right? So if you're making plans, I, I wouldn't be making any plans because I think we're leaving here a different way soon. But if you're thinking about those things, if you come to church here, you can have a funeral here, right? Right? So... My, my plan, I've always, I've told people, you know, I, I want my funeral to be totally different than anybody else's, you know what I mean? I, uh, well, I just told my wife, just, I want to be taxidermied. <laughs> right? Just be out there in a foyer, my hand out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when my fingers break off, just throw me in a burn pile, right? That'd be fine with me. I'll be fine with that, Right? This old tent don't matter to me, really. It doesn't matter to me at all. So anyhow, that's just my plan. Just split me up. The, the crack has begun. Just split me up the back there. Take out the inter part, you know what I mean? And What? You know, yeah, just push this part up. It'll be good, right? It'll be good thought about just now that I told you guys next Wednesday night I'll just be standing at the door practicing uh, yeah 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 I didn't get to say anything you know when it's not my turn on the stage I just prefer to say nothing you know what I mean but I appreciate all the moms I do I I uh or would we be without a mom? I guess we wouldn't be without a mom, right? We just wouldn't be without a mom. But I appreciate all the moms. And, you know, I, I, you know, I think about Jeannie here and what that girl went through, raising kids on her own. And you're amazing, girl. You're amazing. Amazing. Paula had to raise Gabby. I still call her Gabby. But, oh, my gosh. Lord bless you and keep you, and keep, right? And on around the room, you know, the whole thing. But we're thankful for mothers and what they do and their, that little coffee. Did you see that little coffee thing, the little skit she had? Wasn't that good? How these mothers are trying to be perfect, trying to be perfect, and just realize they're good, they're perfect the way they are. So we're grateful for all those things, right? And if you're a mom here today, just be encouraged. The whole world's going crazy and your kids are growing up in a crazy world, Right? Just, hey, how do I say this to you? Just be an example of Jesus first. Amen. That makes sense? Let them see in you Jesus first. And it'll, it'll make a difference over time. If you, if you prioritize other things first, so will they. Right? So, you think it doesn't matter? It matters. It matters. Every bit of it matters. I, I found in the kingdom of God... Every little thing matters, right? So, Father, we thank you for time together. I don't know why you got me where we're at tonight. I think it just fits the theme of the, the, the sadness of our prayer requests and the loss of a loved one here in the church. God, I just pray, Lord, you're, you're in the words somehow, Lord. You spoke to me Sunday that I'm supposed to be in the book that I probably don't like the most. And here we are, Lord. And I'll just preach it, Lord, because that's what you laid on my heart. Lord, be right here with us, I pray. Meet us in these verses, Lord, I, and I'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Job chapter 1. Yeah, that's what... Do, do. Now, the interesting thing about Job is, you know, there's mentions of dinosaurs in the book of Job. And, and, and most, people, most people believe that Job was written about the time of Abraham. But Abraham was after the flood. I'm a guy that happens to believe Job happened before the flood. Now, I, I don't know if that's true or not true. Most people say it, he happened uh, probably at the same time of Abraham. So I get this little map here, the book of Job. You know, the Garden of Eden was over here, and Noah built his ark over here, and, uh, and Abraham traveled that area there. But Job was in this area. Does that make sense? And there's multiple reasons why we feel like because this book isn't dated. You know, this book absolutely was the first book written in the Bible, right? Quite frankly, it may have been the first written book ever in man, to mankind. So this, what we're reading here could be the oldest known written anything, right? So it's way back there. I dated as pre-flood. Uh, there's no mention of the law. There's no mention of the nation of Israel. There's no mention of the Exodus. No mention of Abraham. You know, so there, there wasn't a mention of any of these other characters. So, so what was happening, you know, and God did this at different times with different people. But, you know, he appears to Abraham. And Abraham is living in a family situation where his dad's a high priest to a, a foreign god, right? And the Lord speaks to Abraham and says, get out of there. Go to land, I'll show you, right? So this situation is, uh, is, is, I think, I don't want to say bigger than that. This situation speaks to us about the big picture much more than the stories of Abraham and stuff. Does. So I believe that the oldest book in the Bible, the oldest book written, is trying to give us the overall perspective of, of what's happening around us. And it happens here in the first couple of chapters pretty quickly. The whole middle of the book's, you know, I, I just say it's Larry, Curly, and Moe, the Three Stooges in the middle of the book. And we're not going to try to cover the middle of the book because uh, Three Stooges try to give Job advice. At some point, God gets angry and begins to speak into it and says to him, Where were you at when I created the foundation of the world? And what in the world's your problem? And who do you think you are? And so we're going to skip the Three Stooges part. So I'm going to try to get the first two chapters in. I think we're only trying to do about 60 verses tonight, so we'll be fine. There was a man. In the land of Uz, I, you know, it sounds like it sounds like the Wizard of Oz to me. That's what I'm always thinking of. You know what I mean? Uz. Now Uz is right in here. You know, it's all in the Middle East. God's working, whatever time it's in. God's working in that area. And they men had how do I say this? Even though the world was wicked, God was calling men to righteousness. God was calling men to to love Him, right? I think I just think about righteous people sitting here right now. You know, somehow you, when the rest of the world turned their ear and went the other way, you heard something that said, God, I'm listening, right? And though we haven't lived perfect, though we're a bunch of crazy Gentiles that have got it wrong probably more than we got it right, God's drawing you. He's drawing you to himself, Right? And he wants to mature you. And he wants to. And I think this book is written so that we have understanding about what happens in heaven, in the spiritual battle that's around us. And we don't. We can't see it. We don't take much. You know what we're caught by is what's happening to us. We we very rarely think about what's happening around us. You know. But the enemy plots a strategy against you. He absolutely knows. He's thinking about. What will mess you up? God, who is always good, right, is confronted with the devil that's always bad. Jesus said, I've come. You might have life. You might have it more abundantly. John 10.10. 10. But the thief has come. The only purpose, kill, steal, destroy. Right? So if you let the enemy come in, I've seen it in the lives of people. You let the enemy come in, what's he going to do? Kill, steal, and destroy, right? He's the liar. The devil try to get you to believe a lie. He'll, oh, my goodness. The Lord wants you to live in truth. I mean absolute truth. 
right? The devil wants you to get caught up in a lie. Just and and sometimes you twist yourself around into a lie, right? Or you read stuff that that you can't read and and, and you try to figure something out. Sometimes you're twisting. Sometimes but the devil's a liar. And he wants you to hang on to the lies. Does that make sense? He, he doesn't. He don't want you to believe your husband loves you. He doesn't want you to believe your wife, you know. Um, I don't know what to say about that. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. We, we know men aren't perfect. But what we see here is a guy was, see, I, how do I say it? Here it's upright. In our, in our New Testament, it's righteous, righteous, right? So it isn't that idea that he's perfect. It's this idea that he's striving for doing right. In his heart, he isn't pursuing evil. And I hope as a Christian, you're at the place where your mind, hey, has got to the place where you reject every evil thought. You reject every hate. You reject every lie. You reject, and you're upright. You're, you're pursuing what's right. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. What matters is how you react to it, right? You're going to be judged for how you... I, I can't control everything that's happening around me. Uh, there's times... I, I Just tell you, so I don't think a lot of deacons are here. Jim's here. I... Uh, tell you the power struggle. When we first started the church, there were old men and older men in the church. I shouldn't say old men, but older men in the church. And they wanted a bunch of rules. They come out of a strict legalistic kind of thing. They wanted a bunch of rules and they wanted to sing a bunch of hymns. Well, I knew God put us here, hey, not to be that kind of church, right? Hey, and, and there's plenty of hymns all around us. Let's just sing modern worship music, right? The music that was coming out was absolutely amazing. And, and I knew young families would be drawn to guitars and drums and, and that stuff, you know. So here we, here we are. We start the church. We got a bunch of fine older men, old-fashioned men in our church. And I'm shooting for a, not, how do I want to say this? I, uh, nothing wrong with the old. Hey, but I saw something coming that was good. And God put us here to be that thing, okay? And, and I don't know how to phrase that, but there's nothing wrong with the old. It's just that young people aren't drawn to that anymore, right? We, just so you know, just so you know, we put things on the screen and move stuff and play video, not because, not for the people that are over 45 in the congregation. We put that stuff on the screen, hey, because kids need visual they need stuff moving they need you know they're 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 gamers on so we're even far behind what we should be to catch the attention of kids you know what i mean but in any event how, how do i say this to you job was striving to do the right thing i've left the church here so upset in board meetings where people couldn't catch my vision for the church at all where we wanted to go they they wanted a dress code they wanted to say you know i i they wanted a super duper dress code for the platform they didn't want any liquid anything in the sanctuary they didn't want you chewing gum Man, if I had to put the list under, you know how you put no guns at the door, you know what I mean? We'd have no guns, no gum, no, yeah, no, yeah. We had a guy one time post a no smoking sign here. I ripped that thing down as fast as I can. My, my, here's my opinion on smoking. It's between you and God. And after there was a commandment said, thou shalt not smoke a cigarette, Okay, here's my deal on the whole thing. Even for homosexuals that come in here, hey, they're welcome here, right? What they need to hear is the Word of God. Word of God begins to speak to their heart. Everybody hear that? We don't have any right to judge anything, right? We try to preach the truth. You hear that? And then God begins to deal with people. If I'm doing my job right, hey, I'll plant something in you. 
me and Bill were just talking about, I put a seed in you that's alive, I ain't walk away. I, you know, every one of you all know that I put something in you before, hey, I didn't have to say another word. It wasn't me that was going to cause that thing to grow. It was the Holy Spirit going to cause that thing to grow, right? You're here tonight. We'll probably say something tonight. Don't put another seed in, you know, and that'll grow in you. It's always nice we have low attendance when the Lord shows up best, man. I'm just telling you, you want to be at the, those services, right? Uh, so I believe you're, you're Job. I believe that your people trying to be... Now, if you're somebody here who's really struggling with bad thoughts and struggling with stuff, listen... You're going to see a story play out here where God's paying attention to a man, hey, that's trying to do right. Right? Guess who else is paying attention to him? Satan, right? And I want to tell you something. Hey, Satan is paying attention to everybody that's trying to get it together for God. Right? I'm just, I just know all that. Jamie and I have talked about, hey, we got back from Peru, man, in December. It was so amazing, Peru. <sighs> You, you got to understand, going to Peru for 30 years, right? My daughter and her son, her, and her husband, her husband are pastor in a church now. They built this brand new big building. They got this house. God has just been so gracious and good. They've got ministries in the jungle. My daughter knows 1,500 children's names. They can speak Spanish fluently. They've raised some kids in Peru that were getting married. You know what I mean? We got great grandkids in Peru. Gosh, I feel old. Right, we go, December is this great month, and we have this wedding, and it's family, and it's good, and God is in it, and we weep, thanking God. Thanking God. We come back, we get in a little bit of argument with God, Jamie and I, over a piece of land. Lord, we got a little bit of money in the bank. We're thankful. We've never had that. God's always emptied our bank account. God, every time we've ever, we're savers. We do, every time we get money in the bank, God makes us do something with it. And it's like, Lord, could we just have the, the, the security wants of having some money in the bank? Nope, I want you to buy the land next door. We don't want the land next door. Why do we need a piece of land next door? Right? Why do I need that? I don't need that. You know, it's zone perfect for what I do. And I'm saying to myself, God, I don't know that I want to do what I do bigger than what I'm doing. Does that make sense to anybody? I don't know that I want to do that. I'm not sure. God, and it's like the Lord said, nope, buy that land. No, Lord, I don't want to buy that land. <sighs> okay, Lord, I don't want to say no to you. But God, let this cup pass from me. And the lady, the crazy thing was, the lady that's trying to sell it to us won't leave us alone. When we let it die, she keeps calling. We're trying to let it die, she keeps calling. We buy this piece of land, we put a cross on it at Easter time, light this cross up, you know what I mean? Whole community drives by, they see an empty piece of land with a cross lit up on it. We're either Ku Klux Clay or Crazy Jesus people. Did I say Ku Klux Klan? Ku Klux Klan or crazy Jesus people, right? But I'm just telling you, we're crazy Jesus people. I'm, we're, we're crazy Jesus. I, I don't know. If, we're crazy Jesus people, man. I don't know if you know Jamie and I or not. We're crazy Jesus people. Here's my life, right? I lay it down. Okay. And then a series of things started happening to us. And we've been, I, we, we got itching so bad, I've itched warts off myself. I've itched myself till I'm on fire. You know what I mean? I, I got so bad a week ago, Monday, I was so bad. I just tried to, you know, in public, you try not to, right? I stood up here trying to preach to you the last month or so, wanting to itch so bad. I, I thought about one point just putting a curtain on the stage. I could just dip behind it. And... Last Monday, I was so bad. I got up and I said, God, I can't do this anymore. You've got to give me an answer. I don't know what the answer is. I... 
That morning, just to tell you, that morning the enemy, I'm brushing my teeth. The enemy's saying, your water's so bad you'll never even be able to sell this place. I'm like, where did that thought come from? And I don't want to tell you the whole story, but I just said, God, i got to have an answer today. I've done everything I know to do. I can't. And I don't want to tell you the story because it, it's a weird story. That very day, God gave us the answer. The very next day, we were fine. There's a spiritual battle around you. I, I don't know if you recognize it, but we're going to get into it here. This man is an upright man. You are trying to serve the Lord. You know, you come out here on a Wednesday, and you're trying to serve the Lord. And there, I don't know what it is that's got your goat. I don't know what it is the enemy is strategized to get you, but it's to discourage you. It's to kill you. It's to believe lies. You get to the place, this is so crazy, you get to the place where you don't believe God is a healer anymore. You don't believe God is faithful to his word anymore. You don't believe God even listens to you. The devil will try to get you to believe all that stuff, right? And you can't see this thing that's going on around you. And why God lets the enemy have such access to us when we have so lack of understanding related to spiritual things drives us crazy. But God wants us to grow up in spiritual stuff. Right? Why do we emphasize trying to get in the Bible every day? Because God's trying to plant that thing in us so we can't be tricked by the devil all the time. That makes sense? God wants that to be in us to the place where he, the devil has no foothold in us whatsoever. Right? So, I, I just think as I, as I read this, I, I think it's a bunch of us. The, 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 there's a man. Hey, there's a bunch of men. Let me do it down. I'll just talk to men. There's a bunch of men gathered together tonight in Westville, Ohio, that are upright. They're blameless. How are we blameless? Not because we're perfect, but because the Lord Jesus was perfect and took our beating force, you know what I mean, and called us righteous. It's one of those things where I got stamped USDA, boom, like a piece of meat. God stamped me righteous, right? I think about that sometimes. You know, God got me on the hook. <laughs> And I come by and I go, oh God, I'm a lamb fit for slaughter. Bam! You're righteous. And he lets me off the hook. And then this is crazy. And then I run back in to Mark's stupid thinking. And I let the enemy trick me again in the ways he knows how to get me. And, and it's unique to all of us, right? Whatever discourages you, hey, the enemy knows that. And he'll stay right there until you get the word of God in you strong enough to defeat your enemy, right? Because what defeats the devil? What did Jesus use to defeat the devil? His word. You know, the word of God. <sighs> I've been in the presence of demons before. Chris Livingston used to be great at this. We'd be casting out demons, foaming at the mouth, talking out of your, out of beyond the human ability, demons in people. And Chris Livingston just to open the Bible, start reading about Jesus casting out demons, and that demon would start spitting on us, start just hissing, sometimes just hissing like a snake. And Chris just loved it. Chris was he should have been an exorcist or something, you know. He just love it. The more he read the Bible, I'd be like, <laughs> Chris would be standing there going, and the Lord says, you know what I mean? And it was just, it's it just fun. It, it was just, now that I look back, it, it wasn't fun, but it was, it was the battle. It was the battle, you know? So I get in past the first verse, I got 60 more to go. <laughs> and one who feared God, You see a description of a righteous man right here? Now, there's a lot of people who say, hey, we're Jesus people, but they don't fear God and shun evil. I, I don't know about you. 
There's so much, you know, I don't want to be like this frog in boiling water. You know what I mean? I don't want to be this guy just because I'm in the crazy world that keeps getting worse and worse, that I accept more and more and more and more and more and more, calling it okay, calling it, at some point I got to say, no, I don't even need that. Right? He had seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Ten. Oh my gosh, ten. Now in the day, a lot of kids kind of describes wealth, but it goes on here. Also his possession were 7,000 sheep. <laughs> okay, Jamie, how many sheep do we have at the height? How many do we have? 20? Two? Some place in there. 20-some sheep. We had 20-some sheep. I, let me tell you something. We had 20-some sheep. That was stupid. That was stupid. They were having babies in the middle of the coldest night of the year. I mean, it was ridiculous, right? She, she was up all night. We, I can't tell you how many times mamas would reject their babies. Mamas would, if they'd have two, would, would keep one and reject the other. And we'd have little baby lambs in our closets in our bedrooms. And you think a little baby person is bad, a baby lamb that wants fed, you know, at whatever time he wants fed, bah, in your closet, was ridiculous. And we might have four or five of those at a time. It was, I mean, it was absolutely crazy. I mean, I can remember night, I don't even remember because of our situation, because my wife came equipped as a milk truck, we didn't have to mix bottles of milk. Does that make sense? And I didn't mean to say that in a bad, I just said, never mind. Uh, but we had to mix, mix milk for, for, for lambs, right? That's ridiculous. Put them bottles together, make them warm. He got 7,000 sheep. Now, what that means to me is to just take care of 7,000 sheep. Say one man, let's just say one man could take care of 50 or 60. Let's say 70. Let's make it easy, right? 70. What's that mean? 70 into 7,000 is what? What is that? 100? You need 100 people just to take care of, right? Let's go move on. Uh, 3,000 camels. Now, I haven't been around camels much, but I don't think camels are fun either. Right? I just don't think they do. I think camels spit. I think they have the ability to shoot urine at you, I think. Right? I, I don't know, but why would you want 3,000 camels? You know, how much, you know how much feed it takes to feed? You know how much agricultural effort it takes to feed? I'm just trying to give you an understanding of this Job who was upright. Listen, if I had that many sheep and camels and that many servants, I wouldn't be upright. I, I'm saying I wouldn't be righteous. I'm kidding. I'd be killing people. I'm just telling you. Right? So what we're seeing is Lot had to be a pretty special guy. You understand that? And God had blessed him. And God, so we'll just read on. 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. So he had a lot of kids, a lot of aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Job. I think they calculate, you know, Job, Solomon... Some of these guys were the richest people that ever lived. Beyond the, the wealth of, you know. So, big deal. Big, big guy. Greatest of the people of the East, all right? So, and his sons would go and feast in their houses. Now, I get the tent here, and you'll see it as we go, that his kids didn't have a heart for God like he did. Because you'll see it in a minute. Because Job would come behind them and make sacrifice for them because they may not have been behaving right. You'll see it here. 
each on a, and his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And so it was when the days of feasting had come to an end that Job would send and sanctify them and would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. So in all this stuff, in all these things, you know what Job was concerned about the most? His kids being right with God. I don't know how that speaks to us, but. Now there was a, was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now, this is in a heavenly realm. Okay? If you get me to explain, well, listen to me. I have enough trouble just with my daily spiritual walk to try to explain what's happening in heaven here. But there's a moment, it looks like, where angelic authorities present themselves before God at certain times when God requires it, I, I think. That's what it is. So there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now, if you've ever been in the military, you stand in these big squadrons of people. And, and it's a very formal thing. And like every morning, you stand there and, and you turn and you salute the commander, uh, the, the, the head of the squadron. The squadron turns around and salutes the, the commander of that group. And the group commander, the head of the squadron, the squadron guy to the commander on the base. You know what I mean? Right, Ryan? You've seen all that, right? Sir! All president are counted for, sir! Bam! So the angels are checking in. And it, it sounds like to me, because we see here, Satan comes by, and it seems like the Lord holds them accountable. So I would say as these angel authorities are coming by, the Lord's speaking to them, right? But we happen to catch this time where, and Satan came along with them. So what starts to freak you out is, what's Satan doing in heaven? Do you know that Satan still has access to heaven? Do you know that he makes accusation against the brother? Do you know that he's speaking evil of you? He doesn't like you? If you're living for the Lord, he doesn't like you. So Satan is among them. In fact, they say, you know, we, we believe in Bible prophecy that there's a Psalms 83 war that's about to happen. Rockets are firing now and... It could be a blow up at any time. Psalms 83 war, right? We don't know if the Gog and Magog war is before or I think now, I'm thinking more it's just after the rapture. In the tribulation, there's a moment where Satan, there's a war in heaven. You can read about in Revelation, a war in heaven and Satan finally gets kicked out of heaven no longer to be there. So Satan has access to heaven even now. And I got a feeling that Satan still has to report like he does on this particular story in this day. I think that Job was written so early that it gives us understanding of what, what is happening. That God recognizes the righteous on the earth. The enemy recognizes the righteous on the earth. You know what I mean? And God is making Satan report. And you have to get this understanding. And it hurts us sometimes. That God allows Satan to have certain access to our life. Not to destroy us. Because God, I don't want to say this. I think you know this story enough to say, hey, what is taken away from Job is given back to him in the end. And I, I, what I want to say to you is just the big picture here. Anything you suffer for in this, anything, hey, that you're war at, anything that is taken from you, anything you lose, anything that you're fighting, anything that you give up for the cause of Christ, at some point you'll get all of that back beyond what you can ever believe. The crazy thing is, you know, it talks about some 
you know, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. In this life, it says, some of it will come back to you in this life. But, but you don't, how do I say this to you? You don't really want it here because it'll just pass away, right? You really want it there, then you got to keep it forever. Does that make sense? You, you with me on all that? So sometimes you say, oh, God, would you just bless me? And say, Lord, would you just keep that blessing and let me have it later? Does that make sense? I happen to believe, this is just how I believe. I believe that everything God gives me on planet Earth, hey, because I'm a believer, is for the kingdom. Does that make sense? Whatever, whether it's knowledge, whether it's finances, whatever it is, however God wants to direct that, you know what I mean? God doesn't necessarily want me to live in comfort. God wants me to be a, an obedient child, right? So everything God gives me on this life, I need to be, I think you think of myself like a funnel that God pours in to pour through, right? I even see it in myself in preaching. God will show me something and then show me the verses and then boom, next thing you know, there it goes. Right? And that's how God wants us to be. And then, someday, in heaven, there's this amazing eternal reward for everything, hey, that you were faithful to God for or with in this life. That makes sense? Uh, it's, it's awful nice in church when we clap. But I always feel like we're taking a, etern- we're taking a blessing away from heaven. Don't clap. You know, Charity did a great job the other day, and we feel, you know, Charity's in that broken state she's in, and we, man, we have a heart for her. She came up here saying beautiful, and then everybody clapped. I'm like, ah, that's, that's it. My dad used to stop and change tires for people, and uh, they'd try to give him money, and he'd say, no, I don't want that. I just, yeah, I, you know, and when he was living for the Lord, he'd say something like, hey, we're just Christians trying to serve the Lord, and we can change a tire. And he wouldn't take it. He'd get back in the truck and say, boys, if she'd have gave us that money, that's all we'd have got. And we didn't take it. There's an eternal reward. And I always thought, you know, because young, we learned that. So I always thought, man, I ought to stop it. Everybody broke down on the road every time. You know what I mean? If there's some kind of eternal reward, I ought to be... There's a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came along uh, among them. And the Lord said to Satan, where do you come from? So this is pretty good, isn't it? So Satan has to report to God, hey, and God has the absolute right and authority to ask a few questions. Right? True. I... uh, I have guys live in my house. I feel like I have the right to ask questions, right? Hey, you're acting weird today. Where you been? Who you been hanging with? What are you doing? Right? Sometimes the best way I know to do this is to ask some questions, right? You just I take the guys to breakfast every morning. I tell them all the time, uh, I don't really care about your urine. I don't want that. I'm not into that. But every morning when you get up and you go with me, I'm looking at your eyes. You're getting drug tested every morning. Mark's drug test is, I'm looking hard at you. What are you doing? What are you thinking? Where are you at? Are you acting goofy? What's funny is when you start asking questions, you get to some answers. Or you get to some lies. Or the story don't start making sense. And I'm of this opinion when you're dealing with people, hey, when it doesn't make sense, something's wrong. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth. And from walking back and forth on it. I always make a joke and say, the devil didn't even have a bicycle. Yeah. His buddy Lot, not Job, I'm saying Lot. His buddy Job has got 7,000 camels or whatever. And the devil don't even have a camel. Where am I at? Seven verses? My wife's giving me a time's up sign. We haven't even got started. And the Lord said to Satan, I'll quit quick. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? 
Have you considered Bill Cannon? What a good guy. Have you considered John Fisher? John, I heard you say you're sick of puppies. Now get me some grandkids, right? You had one get married? Tired of puppies. Get me a grand some grandkids. I bet the Lord laughed at that. That's funny of God to laugh at that, man. That's a good one. And we didn't even get anywhere tonight. But the truth of the matter is, hey, God, hey, God's watching. God knows who belongs to him. Satan, we haven't gotten to the place where Satan makes accusation against us. I guess we're going to pick it up. I was hoping that I'd get through 60 verses tonight. And I, I, I didn't even really get eight very good. And we'll just go back here next week, okay? Is that all right? Father, we thank you for time. Thank you, Lord, that you're looking at us. Thank you, Lord, that there are people in this place, Lord. Why the world runs after themselves, there's a people of God who's running after you. And, Lord, it's easy for us to trip. It's easy for us, the enemy, to, to leave out the banana peels for us to slip on. But you're bigger than that. That psalm, Lord, that's moving me. That psalm 95 moved me. And the, before you, the mountains of the world melt like wax. You're so much more, Lord. Can we get it tonight, even though I didn't get any place close to where I wanted to be? Can, God, can we get that you're the one watching over us? Can we get the one, Lord, that, that you know where our present condition is? God, can we understand tonight, my wife taught it Sunday, why do we even worry? Help us, Lord, to get the word down in us. Help us to understand there's a spiritual battle. Lord, I didn't even make that point tonight. But there's a spiritual battle around us we can't see, don't understand. The devil's making accusation. And the Lord is doing what God does. God is working good in everything. It's hard for us to see sometimes. But in the big picture, God is good and the devil's bad. And e evil will lose, Lord, in the end. And, and, and those that are righteous and those who trust in God will have victory forevermore. We're glad we're on that side, Lord. We're glad that you set us apart to know you. We're glad, Lord, you called us by name. Glad, Lord, we can cry out to you and you hear us. No place in the scripture, Lord, do I see you run away, Lord, and are not listening. Thank you, God, for being good. Thank you, Lord, that you make Satan answer to you. I can't trust him, Lord, but I can trust you. So give us understanding, even the little bit we covered tonight, Lord, a greater understanding of how you're working and what you're doing and who you are and your great, great love for us. We we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. Didn't even pray for Jamie Ketchell. They're back in Peru. So God bless you. Come and see us, right? Uh, if you know Kim Kausman, you might reach out to her. Thanks for being here. We love you. Play me some funky music, white boys.